Good morning. I'm Dan Thomas. I'm the communications director and the spokesman for the president of the UN General Assembly. Thank you for attending this media stakeout following today's informal dialogue of the General Assembly. Please allow me to introduce Dr. Danilo Turk, a former permanent representative, a former UN Assistant Secretary General, and a former president of his country, Slovenia, which has nominated him as a candidate for the position of the next Secretary General of the United Nations. Sir, the floor is yours. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be back at the United Nations, where I have uh, spent and worked many years. Um, I would only like to say that we have heard of all about my former duties. Uh, I'm, of course, here today to speak about my future plans. And my future plans relate to the post of the UN Secretary General. The question you might have is why do I consider myself appropriate for the job? And I would say it can be described by three words, experience, commitment, and vision. Now, I have spoken about all these three aspects in my statements and responding to questions of member states, and I believe that you have followed at least part of that discussion. I think it was pretty interesting, and I only regret that we didn't have more time which would allow me to elaborate on various things that were discussed. But here I am, and I am eagerly awaiting your questions, and I'll be happy to try to respond the best way I can. Uh, thank you, Mr. Turk, and uh, welcome back to the United Nations from some of your old friends who are here. Um, you talked about vision experience. Yeah. Um, how important do you think it is for the next Secretary General to um, be a dynamic communicator, someone who can really address um, a young generation that's very hooked on the digital world. And what would you do to really uh, change the way this institution communicates with all of the countries and the peoples of the world? Well, obviously, uh, communicating with the world is a very important job for the Secretary General. Unfortunately, nobody can claim to have all the perfect qualities, and I'm intensely aware of the fact that the young generation today communicates differently from what our generation used to do. And I, what I would do in this kind of circumstances are a few things. Of course, I will do my best to communicate with the public to the best of my abilities. But then I would appoint somebody as the chief of DPI who is really familiar with modern ways of communication. I would invite young people to join the United Nations. And I would like to suggest a fund which would allow young artists to come uh, into the United Nations framework simply to learn the stories of the United Nations and to tell the stories. I think the UN is very bad in storytelling. We have great stories to tell, and we have to find people who can do it. Very good. Thanks a lot. I, I, you were asked about... Uh, you can announce your name oh, and your yes. media okay. organization. Sure. Thanks, a lot. Thanks for reminding me. Matthew Lee, Inner City Press. You were asked about the Haiti cholera issue. Yes. And, and I, maybe I misunderstood you. You seem to say that immunity is a good and appropriate thing, but that there may be some process behind the scenes taking place to, to, to pay compensation. I'm not aware of that. And on DPI, you mentioned, you know, you, I, I like what you just said, but do you think that journalists at the UN should have some kind of a due process right, i.e. be able to express themselves as they see fit without being throw out, thrown out or some kind of appeals right? Do you think that the same principles of freedom of the press that the UN preaches elsewhere should apply inside the United Nations? Well, surely the uh, principles should apply uh, to everybody. I would only warn against over um, legalizing things. I think we have to work in the spirit of cooperation. After all, we are all here for the same purpose. And I think that that purpose should guide us. In a similar vein, uh, what I said about cholera and Haiti. You see, I'm a law professor, and I highly value the importance of legal regulation and legal statuses including the uh, immunity for the United Nations. It's an important uh, feature of this organization. But then we have to think about fairness and process. 
and also remedies in a broader sense. We have to distinguish between what is legally necessary and what is humanely possible. And I would like UN to do everything that is humanely possible. When I say that I trust that there are discussions, that there are informal con contacts about the, the Haitian situation, um, I cannot say that I know full well what is going on. But I have a sense from various indications that I have seen, and I can't be more precise on this, that this story is not closed, that, that this, is a, this is a problem that has to be dealt with. And I, I do trust in the Secretary General and his work and his communication with the Security Council in the, in the search for, for some degree of fairness and, and justice. Joseph Klein, Canada Free Press. Uh, would you, as Secretary General, favor institutionalizing some form of freedom of information uh, in the spirit of open and trans uh, transparency, in other words, to have uh, internal documents that are not uh, specific, you know, do not deal specifically with very sensitive confidential information to be made public uh, uh, sooner than, than they are now? And also, it related to the same question, would you favor a standing outside body, um, independent body, and I think this was a question you might have had inside yeah. the chamber, to, um, uh, investi to investigate uh, allegations of wrongdoing and recommend rem remedies, but it would be a standing body rather than one created for each particular crisis. Thank you. Well, on the freedom of information, let me mention an anecdote from one of the previous secretaries general who complained that whatever is discussed on the 38th floor becomes known on the second floor in about 10 minutes. Uh, that was the impression that insiders had about the confidentiality of their processes. It's also important to understand that sometimes the ideas that are being discussed within the Secretariat have to mature and it would be inappropriate to discuss them publicly at the time when they are not properly mature. So these are the kind of basic features of diplomatic work and the United Nations which have to be respected. However, I think that your suggestion about uh, freedom of information policy, I would put it that way, freedom of information policy is a valid one. If elected as Secretary General, I would certainly look into this. I would certainly consult with the senior management to see how best to do it. Because the UN has to be transparent. UN has to be uh, available to the people. That's the only way that UN can strengthen its authority. So, so the basic idea is clearly, I shouldn't say acceptable, because this is kind of two UNEs, but a very good one and something that I would certainly entertain if elected. And then finally, on the external body, um, there has to be a combination. I think UN has to do more for in, its internal processes to be sufficiently quick, sufficiently transparent, and sufficiently effective. Uh, when we talk about the Central African Republic and the misconduct of peacekeepers, it was really appalling that the process was not immediate, that, that things did not happen you know, immediately, that things were not brought to the attention of the Secretary General and acted upon immediately. Now why that happened and how it happened, I don't know. I'm, I'm not an insider at this point. But I can clearly see a need for a more effective internal processes irrespective of what we do with external bodies. There may be a need for external bodies as well, but my priority would be for greater effectiveness and quick work of the internal processes. Hello, Mr. Torp. Good to see you again after all these years. Um, Evelyn Leopold, to pick up on communication, can you do anything to change the UNEs in which the, US, the UN speaks? It's not necessarily something that the Department of uh, Information does, but in every single meeting. Well, maybe you have seen my effort this morning. I, I tried, but, but sometimes it is very difficult. You know, we are, we are all captivated by our language, by our concepts, and we gradually lose uh, uh, the understanding that the outside world is not speaking in the same language, is not using the same concepts. So we need an effort to change that. Now, 
what, what I could do uh, at this point is certainly bring some um, non-UN experience. I have been outside the UN for the last uh, eight or nine years, so that, that's helpful, I believe. And then if I'm elected the Secretary General, I will make sure that at least 30 percent of what I say is non-UNEs. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much. That was great. Okay.